Hello, welcome to Revenant Reads. I'm Vin, and this is a second half of an installment of Fresh Red Kills. So Fresh Red Kills is where I talk about the books that I have recently read. Um, I had published a first half of my reading uh, just previous to this, uh, where I talked about um, Annette Gordon Reed's Thomas Jefferson and Sally Hemings, an American controversy. Uh, in this half, I'm going to focus on the books that I read for the Africa, this our Reading Africa 2022 Reading Challenge, um, which is uh, an event hosted uh, by Mark over at Book Time with Elvis, and we are following the Africa Cup of Nations soccer tournament, okay, the continent-wide uh, soccer championship that is going on, and. Those who participate, uh, Mark randomly drew a country that we would follow that is participating inside that tournament. I got the Ivory Coast, um, hence the book that I'm holding up right now. And what we do for that challenge is first you read a book either about or from uh, the, your chosen country, so Ivory Coast, and you follow them through the tournament. And if a country defeats your country, you read something from that country. Uh, if your country is knocked out, then at least the way it was, um, might be a little bit different this time, but generally we would follow the country then who knocked our country out. Um, so I did read, uh, a few books for this. I had already read two works of African poetry as a lead up to this, and I've made videos about those. I read those, um, in December. And, uh... The book that I chose for the Ivory Coast is this one here, uh, A Gazelle Ate My Homework, A Journey from Ivory Coast, Ivory Coast to America, from African to Black, from Undocumented to Doctor, with side trips into several religions and assorted misadventures by Habib Fanin. Um, and this is a memoir, and it was a lot of fun. Um, Habib Fanin, he's a He's a he's a, a medical I think a surgeon or a medical doctor he he's he's, he's a physician of some kind, um, and uh, he's also somebody who left the Muslim faith. He talks about that in here, um, and he I guess it was well known for being a very popular answerer or commenter on the website Quora, which I don't have a lot of experience with. I've certainly found myself there sometimes to find answers to things, but. I don't know enough about the website to really understand how all of that works, but I know that he was very popular on there. And um, it was, I think, the people on Quora uh, who followed him that really inspired him and pushed him to write this book. And it's it's a fun read. Um, it's a very light read. Some of these chapters are very short. Uh, it's mostly chronological. Um, he does bounce back and forth, especially in the beginning. He does kind of bounce back and forth in time, but you don't really lose the chronological order of things. And he talks about growing up in the Ivory Coast, uh, what that was like, um, his movement into uh, his movement to America, what it was like, especially as a teenager, an African teenager who uh, spoke French, right, trying to learn English, but also trying to figure out what it meant to be black in the United States. Uh, people that he thought that he would be able to relate to, like other black teenagers in an urban environment, um, he found he couldn't really relate to them. Um, you know, he, he discovered, uh, that he was basically a nerd, uh, and, you know, um, it, that he kind of had to come to terms with that. Uh, and he said, you know, what does it mean to be black in America when you don't have any history of slavery, right? And what African Americans went through in this country. Um, you know, those are some of the things that he struggles with, uh, what his racial identity meant and how different it was from Africa. Um, you know, he talks about going to school and it's pretty impressive. I mean, it's very inspiring how, how hard he worked to get where he was when he, they had no money. Um, and he had some people who helped him along the way who saw potential in him. Um, and he kind of bounces back and forth between that narrative of becoming a doctor uh, and his misadventures when it comes to, um, trying to fit in or trying to date women. Um, and he'll occasionally kind of bounce back to, uh, what was going on in the Ivory Coast. Um, the, the civil war that had broken out and how the country was, was faring up, uh, over time. And again, as I mentioned before, he talks about growing up, um, in Islam and, 
has a short stint in Christianity, and then as he kind of gradually started losing his faith altogether to uh, become an atheist. Um, so I, I really enjoyed this. This was fun. It was a quick read. Uh, like I said, very light, but that moments where I was laughing, um, has nice humor about it. He's got some really nice insight into things. And uh, yeah, I would, I would recommend that. Uh, I would recommend this book um, to people who are interested in learning more about not just the Ivory Coast, but also, um, you know, a, a recent immigrant story. Uh, and one that's a success story, but one that is, you know, not paved with rose-tinted glasses. <laughs> I know that's a really mixed metaphor, but I think you know what I mean there. Um, so anyway, uh, that's the one that I read for that. Now, Ivor Coast, um, as part of the group, they had to play uh, again, this is actually, I'm filming this on the final day of the group stage, and Ivory Coast has moved on. Uh, I think they're going to be playing Egypt next, um, the next round. Um, but the first team that they played, I believe, was uh, Equatorial Guinea, and they won against them, but I read a short story from them anyway. And then they tied with Sierra Leone, and even though they tied with them, I had already read my Sierra Leone pick. I, I had something picked out from each country just in case the Ivory Coast lost, um, and I decided to read this one anyway, uh, regardless of the outcome, because it followed very nicely, actually, from what I was reading uh, when I talked about in my last video about Sally Hemings and slavery in the U.S., and also knowing that I was going to be reading another book on that same topic, The Hemings is a Monticello by Nick Gordon-Reed. Um, I wanted to learn more about the slave trade anyway. Uh, so I'd found this book as my Sierra Leone pick, and I read this. And this is uh, The Voyage of the Slave Ship Hare, A Journey into Captivity from Sierra Leone to South Carolina by Sean M. Kelly. And this was a University of North Carolina Press um, just from a few years ago. Yeah, 2016. And what this is, they, earlier this century, uh, they had released tons of data um, on, the, on the, the basically the triangle trade. Um, uh, the, the slave trade in particular, uh, the ship's logs, the records, going for hundreds of years. Um, and it's a huge treasure trove of, of data. Um, but it also it is incredibly impersonal. Um, you're talking about human lives, human beings becoming commodities. Uh, you know, many who did not either survive even the journey across the Atlantic Ocean or died within the first year or so of arriving in the New World. Uh, so many of them, you know, none of them really have names. Uh, we don't know about the fates of many of them. They're, they're statistical numbers, and that can be very cold and dissatisfying. And what Sean M. Kelly tries to do is he tries to take one of the ships, the Hare, which had sailed in the 1750s. Uh, it actually went from Rhode Island first, then to Sierra Leone, or what we call Sierra Leone today. Uh, that's not entirely accurate historically. Um, and then finally to South Carolina, Charlestown, or Charleston today. And I guess there's a lot of records on that voyage. Uh, it's one of the most well-documented, but still, it is mostly just data. You know, it's numbers and commodities that are listed uh, with some names, at least the white names. We don't know about the Africans. But what he tries to do is look at look at the situation, look at the logs. Okay, so they start off in, North, in Rhode Island. So what can he figure out about the logbook based on what we know about Rhode Island at that time? Uh, who are the people's names in these records and what were they like? What were they doing? Right. And then we end up going to the African coast uh, to get slaves. And I thought it was interesting. I, I didn't really know how that worked. Um, of course, you have the triangle trade, which, you know, that that term makes it sound more simple than it actually was. Uh, but I wasn't sure how slaves were exactly um, acquired uh, once a slave ship arrived and how that worked, at least in the 1750s, how it was happening. So I got clarification on that. And we can kind of see some of the politics and the situations. And he goes into who the captives might have been, not personally, not as individuals, but at least what group were they probably f with? Uh, what language might they have spoke, right? What situation might have been where they were in this position um, to be sold as slaves? And then we end up going to, I think, Barbados for a little while on the way back to South Carolina. Um, and I think in South Carolina, it actually gets very interesting. Um, he goes into kind of where the slaves have been sold to, and he gets into slave culture. Um, and, you know, South Carolina had pretty horrible slavery, but 
um, there was more opportunity for slaves to kind of um, communicate with each other and to have some downtime. Because I guess they were what you call task focused. Um, instead of just making them work all day, they would give them tasks that they had to uh, accomplish during that day. And those tasks were designed to make it take all day, but oftentimes it didn't. Uh, so a slave who was not really under the eye of a of their slave master, and that happened quite a bit because these slave masters liked to hang out in South Carol uh, in Charleston quite a bit, and weren't always at their plantation. Um, they they were able to kind of build a culture there and he gets into that and he gets into how that might have happened and um that stuff was really interesting and overall this is a terrific work of scholarship um there is a lot of you know extrapolation there's a i wouldn't call it guesswork um <laughs> but you know he can't tell you exactly most of what happened he said it was probably this and these are the reasons and this was probably where they were from and this is why uh, and that can get, as far as reading pleasure, it can be kind of dry. Uh, you can get this kind of dry academic feel because you're not really following a clear narrative. You're kind of getting lots of data thrown at you in a lot of ways. And it's interesting. It's valuable. Um, I think you'll come away with a really good understanding of what a slave ship would have been like at the time, um, at least from kind of a business point of view. Uh, but... You know, it's not it's not necessarily compulsive reading that'll make you you know it's not a page turner, um, but anyway, I mean I don't know how you could you know again he's filling in lots and lots of gaps, um, so there's there's quite a bit of conjecture going on here, uh, but despite that I was definitely glad that I read it. Um, I would recommend it to people who want to learn more about the slave trade, especially um, in the mid 18th century. I think it was very good for that. I think. A casual history reader, again, might find this a little bit dry. Um, but uh, if, if you're okay with that, if you're okay with kind of more, you know, a certain academic reading, um, I think that people would find a lot of valuable information in here. Um, and he does have some images in this book as well, uh, which is great. Um, some of which are from the time period, and also some, some maps as well. Um, so, yeah, uh, a qualified, you know, recommendation, uh, if you kind of just got to know what you're getting into. Uh, but otherwise, it's a very good book. Um, so those are the two that I read for the Reading Africa 2022 challenge so far. The tournament is not over. Um, you know, it's, we still got a couple rounds to go. Uh, we'll see how Ivory Coast, my country does. Um, and I look forward to seeing, you know, what's in store. Um, so anyway, these are the two that I read. A gazelle ate my homework. And the Voyage of the Slave Ship Hare. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you, BookTube.